Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see you guys here. Yes, on a sad note, this is our very last Grace Hub House Church service. And uh, stay tuned for what I will be planning to do. Of course, you could see me in person at uh, the Las Vegas Church First Congregational. But I'm glad you guys are here to celebrate with me uh, this uh, new journey. The Holy Spirit had me hear the words from the prophet Isaiah in shaping this morning's message. He says, listen, you that are deaf and you that are blind, look up and see. Who is blind but my servant or who is deaf like my messenger whom I send? Who is blind like my dedicated one, or blind like the servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. I thought about these words this past week, spinning out of a conversation I had with a colleague of mine about the idea of service. And we are very familiar with that word. Uh, the biblical Greek has it as diakonia how to serve, the, the servant leader, serving one another. How it is seen or interpreted in the 21st century is where our conversation went. What has become a priority, sadly, is not only not God's priority and how we should treat one another, but is devoid of all gracious fruits in favor of what is seemingly logical practical, and financially sound. What about compassion and hospitality? What about kindness? These are the questions that I came to ask. Are we becoming so wound up in our rules, regulations, and agendas that we don't even go there anymore basically to be become lights to the world? I was remembering the beautiful sunset this past weekend across the Las Vegas landscape, I wondered and prayed even further. Have we let the sun, S-O-N, go down into the darkness of our hearts to truly change? Have we allowed Christ in? Have we opened that door for him? Or are we, in essence, claiming to see the light of many things, but are truly spiritually blind to the beauty that the gospel is calling us to act upon so many questions this season of lent leaves that first church the heart to ponder it really does this is the the era the season of questioning lest we forget though lent is that spiritual time for introspection house cleaning last week we saw and heard about the living water and the well of the soul accepting and converting through the wonderful testimony of the Samaritan woman at the well. With this week's gospel, we see Christ actively healing a man who was not only born blind, but was to a certain extent spiritually blind, or more or less the people around him for sure. The Pharisees and their entourage, however, are completely blind to the spiritual truth of loving God and neighbor and are immersed within their own justification for their darkness and distortion of the purpose of the law. They are compassionless, basically, hostile, self-righteous, and curved inward towards their own blind agenda. I would simplify this further in saying that they exampled graceless behavior. Those are a lot of loaded words, but we are at times on our journey guilty of this attitude towards our neighbors, ourselves. Graceless behavior is fueled first and foremost by the old nature, the ego. Remember our fascination with the world revolving around ourselves? The amazing grace of God is seen through throughout our lives when we find ourselves, when we find ourselves at that same spiritual pool alongside the blind man, washing away not only our sin, but washing away the past 
to build upon a brand new future. Yes, it is a very lovely baptismal image there. Let me tell you, there's been a lot of uh, that going on, uh, basically moving into the future here, speaking for my husband and myself. Instead of washing, there's been a lot of packing away and away the past and preparing that pathway into the future to come and answer God's will to love and serve my neighbor. And what has become titled in jest, or I've heard or come to hear, as Sin City, or best known as Las Vegas. That's probably a really unfair title to give a city in America, I think. Why was it even given such a jab? Is it because of their past, the gambling, uh, mobsters, etc., things of movie material? What about their future? That's what I come to ask. Truth be told, my favorite depiction of Jesus in action is from that classic 382-minute movie, which was a miniseries when uh, I was very small. Jesus of Nazareth by Franco Zeffirelli. It's from 1977. Today's gospel has Jesus looking with loving compassion and understanding upon this poor, poor blind man who was panhandling outside of the temple. Through his most loving and gracious heart, Jesus thought about the blind man's future and wanted him to truly know what it means to see. Isn't that a wonderful thought? what it really means to see. And everything we come to learn is in focus to the spirit. Seeing things, though, through, and seeing things through, is that spiritual aerobic or internal surgery God is calling our hearts to be faithful to, basically. God is calling us to live into our promise to him to become children of light. Seeing things, however, the way God needs for us to requires us to wake up. We have to wake up to the reality of sin, death, and evil more than alive and well practiced all around us. The reality of this is all around us. How do we remain faithful? How do we remain faithful, especially to the future yet to be realized is something unseen. It is, for the most part, unknown. The Gospel writer John doesn't really say what happens to the former blind man after Jesus heals him. I bet a part of you would love to see the story continue and hear exactly what happened, but that right there reveals our constant want-to-see attitude. Without harboring or holding enough faith, and hope in the details we can't see or truly know. You know, no, just the facts, ma'am. You know, we're, we're just kind of, we're, we're wired, uh, that human nature to not kind of trust in things unseen or or not be hopeful enough to wonder, you know, okay, well, I, I want to have like a, a, a fortune-telling reading or, you know, see a psychic and know exactly what's happening step by step. The other day, of all things, on social media, I ran across a very old acquaintance from my art and poetry days. He was still pretty much the same as he's always been, which was interesting. After about 51 line, liners from him jabbing at anything and everything I was doing um, in regards to what I had been doing within a new life immersed in ministry, he couldn't, he just couldn't wrap his mind around that. So he, he finally gave up, I believe, and began to share where his life was going, basically. Sam used to write tarot readings and a sarcastic column for uh, a lovely arts and poetry magazine back in the early 90s. He's retired now, but still fairly immersed in art, astrology, agnosticism, alimony, and absinthe. Yes, you heard that right, that last word right, absinthe. He and his girlfriend live uh, on the very northern end of uh, the northern, northern, northern end most point of Minnesota, just about within waving distance of Canada. Not too much to do there, he claims, except for getting a ride from absinthe and painting life-size tarot card depictions 
And it really was a sad story to hear. It was very sad to hear. Not just about his dangerous problem with addiction, but that I felt I was talking with someone who was still stuck back in those, that boho Chicago of the early 90s. Nothing had really changed for him. Nothing has changed, and his vision of the world had even become more clouded and murky due to his choices. I could have ended the conversation a lot earlier, sensing kind of the hostility and misunderstanding he held against how my life had uh, changed by finding the Lord. But I couldn't and I didn't. The pastor in me, I just couldn't. He needed someone to talk to. He needed a bended ear. And perhaps someone to uh, share something that was more or less a cry for help. The Pharisees in today's gospel completely avoided the poor and suffering souls outside their very own temple doors. And in the uh, Zeffirelli movie, they were showing that there was tons of people who were uh, begging and groveling for help, not just financial help, but were suffering. And the Pharisees just kind of trampled right past them, didn't even notice them. They're so wound up in their self-righteousness and difference that they couldn't really see these people at all. You know, these were holy men, you know, the men of God assigned by Yahweh. They only saw them when Jesus had the audacity to show compassion upon some of them and break their Sabbath day rules. What I said in last week's message should echo here as our Lenten challenge and truth. Our Lenten challenge and truth. This challenge and truth is that life is unpredictable. Got to have faith to carry on. But it is not unchangeable. We have that light within us, given as the reality gift of grace. We are called to let it shine. We are truly called to let it shine. Let it shine by believing not only in God, but believe in yourself. Believe in yourself that God has truly given you new life to tap into. That, and that his love is the new law and guide for our unpredictable, ever-transforming journey. Again, the Lenten season is so much about fine-tuning ourselves spiritually. What faith is, does, and becomes for a world struggling within a darkened wilderness. You know, we're in that wilderness that uh, Jesus was in, uh, debating and arguing with Satan. But we're still stuck in there. You know, or you can compare yourselves to the ancient Israelites. We're still in exile and kind of grumbling and complaining and wondering, what, what, what do we do here? Winter is nearly over. Uh, get out there, spiritually that is, and get to work. That's really what Lent is towards Easter. Sleep or awake. Give heed to the cries of your neighbor and love them. Bring them the gift of peace that your heart can shine upon them through Christ. That's important. Whenever you are on that road of your spiritual formation journey as a disciple of Jesus, wash away the past by learning from it and moving forward. Shake off the dust and rise up from the past and move into a new future. As you can see all around us here, moving has been on our minds. <laughs> For 48 years I've lived in Chicago and I've packed away just as much as you can see here. You know, it's not the last scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark, but almost. <laughs> 13 years earlier, my life at the time completely changed upon my finding Christ. Christ gave my life a whole new purpose and direction. He opened my blind eyes to see. I laid down my paints and my brushes and took up my cross to follow, love, trust, and serve Christ Jesus and my neighbor with the gracious fruits of my life lived to his gospel. The Pharisees couldn't stand Jesus' sense of freedom. They hated that. They hated his preaching and teaching, living change. They couldn't control him. Much like the man I, I talked to about couldn't or didn't want to understand how someone else could change so much. 
you know, I mean, one of the one-liner jokes, he said, you know, did an alien spaceship kind of just like take take away your, your senses? You know, what, what happened? Well, welcome to being human, okay? It isn't an excuse, but think for a moment. Christ became fully human and was truly fully divine. We confess that in the ecumenical creeds fully human, fully divine, but you know, we, you got to understand that in regards to Lent and Easter, the profoundness of that God coming down to us to take on everything that was darkness, death, and evil to that cross. He took everything to the cross. He took all of our blindness, deafness, and inaction and nailed it to that cross only to destroy it and pour upon us that amazing grace. How sweet the sound of those living waters, saving many a wretch like me. The fact is, Christ continues to save us, strengthen us daily. This is our hanging onto the unpredictable roller coaster of life. Faith is our bond. That tiny mustard seed of the new nature pleading for us to come and see. Come and see the king. Come and follow. Share the gospel within a weary and hurting world. Serve your neighbor. Love God. Bring, be, love, peace, mercy through Christ Jesus who shines eternal. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord Jesus, we are your children needing to shine. Help us to open the eyes of our hearts to truly see and know what must be done for your gospel's mission in the world. Let us each embark upon that unpredictable highway towards building a new foundation, a new future, where the sun, S-O-N, is always shining. Through our hearts, hands, feet, and voices, love is not a difficult task, but requires faith, and diligence. Help our weakened spirits become strong. In your most precious name, we take refuge and we have new life. Amen.